Oh, poor Donny Sanders missed the number one spot by only two feet. And here is that final puller. Glenn Davis has the number one spot, and he'll be the winner in left. Tony Osteen, strapping on his helmet, and the Georgia Rebel can outdistance him. And there's the man that can make a big difference. Yeah, Ron Hickson brings the decision maker back into place. Glenn Davis has a serious interest in this next run. He's with Pat. Well, Paul, Steve, Tony Osteen's the only guy left that can knock this man out of a win here at the Astrodome tonight. What we're going to do is let's let him call this run. You ready for this? You got one more guy that can beat you here. He's getting hooked up back there. Tell me how his truck works as he comes down the track. Uh, Tony's a pretty good running truck for a Ford. He's starting over where I start on the far side where nobody else gone there since I ran there. You think he's going to have a big advantage at that side or is it really going to matter that much? I don't think it matters that much. My truck's running super strong right now and I don't think anybody can beat it right now. What's going through your mind? What's going through Tony's mind right now as he's looking down the track? Tony knows he's the last person to do it. He, he needs to win this one to get back on the road again. Tony Osteen targeting 291.6 feet. tonight would be your night. I mean, you had these feelings earlier when we talked this afternoon. You had a great pull right off the top. You knew this would be a good night for you. Yeah, I just got this Greg Kramer motor put together. I ran it four times. I got three firsts with it. Last week, I had two first places, and I just come here feeling strong was going to win this thing. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, he certainly wasn't overconfident because he did exactly what he thought he could do. Glenn Davis is the champion in the 4x4 class. At 291 feet, Donnie Sanders second, Robert Gallahan in third, Nanwell Marino, the defending champ, is pushed all the way down to fourth place. The only lady in the category, Donna Webb, she had a very respectable effort coming in in spot number six. And coming up next, we continue with round number two of the Monster Trucks. There are few racing vehicles on this planet more unique than Monster Trucks. I'm Steve Evans along with Paul Page and Pat Patterson in the Houston Astrodome for the TNT All-American. And here is the champion from last year, Paul, Awesome Call. Well, as a matter of fact, Steve, we've got a couple of champions out of last year because in the near lane, that will be Nightlife, also a winner. This should prove to be one terrific race. All right, here you see the man driving the Awesome Kong, and it is truly one of the most powerful, risk-taking operations in monster truck racing. This is Dave Weitzerek, the Nightlife 2 driver, a little more conservative, but he always gets the job done. Now, Andy Brass drives the Bigfoot truck, the best-known name in all of monster truck racing. And earlier, in round number one, watch Bigfoot on the far side of your screen, and you'll see why you don't see him in round number two. Bigfoot lined up and ready to go. Now the rules say that you have to stay in your lane. You can see that Bigfoot got a great, great start. Was coming around the corner. Now keep an eye on the Bigfoot. Took a pretty wide swing against Nightlife 2. And then on this jump, whoa, got way out of his lane and then slammed that right front into the ground and flatted it. But the minute he went out of his lane, he was disqualified. Oh, absolutely. And I think what happened is Andy Brent got a little bit behind and thought, uh-oh, I got to do something quick. And just uh, didn't get a good approach at the final car jump. Well, as a result of that, it's Awesome Kong over on the far side. Nightlife 2 in the near lane. Something is squirting out there at the back end of Awesome Kong, Steve. Well, it might be hydraulic fluid. The only effect would be if it all was to bleed out. It might uh, not have the rear wheel steering that he'd like to have. And that is really important, negotiating that hairpin. Yeah, it might be just a little overpressure. It might be a leak. Who knows? If we keep an eye on Awesome Kong, Nightlife 2 here in the near lane. Awesome Kong getting a nice start. And now fluid's coming 
coming out down there at the differential. Awesome Kong has something definitely wrong, and he rolls to a stop as Nightline 2 heads down to the finish. Nightline 2 will win this one as something goes wrong with the Awesome Kong. That was just a beautiful drive by Nightline 2, and Awesome Kong, you see all the smoke coming out there. Uh, whatever that was bringing out, got in touch with uh, the exhaust system or some other hot part on that truck, and the driver is out and having a look if that wasn't some sort of hydraulic line or something. At first, we saw it up in the back there, and then you could see, now watch here, down at the uh, differential in the back. And there it is, something squirting out there as well. Whatever it is, it certainly led to the demise of the awesome car. The second defending champion to fall in competition. Pat? Well... You wanted this kind of a situation, and you got it exactly like you wanted it tonight. It's going pretty good. I hope to get in the finals and win it overall. I didn't know what Kong was doing. He's usually a hard runner, and he must have tore up something on that curve. I seen I had him a little bit, so I just went for it again. You sure seem consistent tonight, especially down there making that all-important turn coming back up to the finish line. Well, a lot of guys aren't used to using their rear steering, and I, I never block mine off. I use it all the time, and I think that's worked for an advantage for me. Just using it all the time. I'm familiar with it. All right. Can you win this thing tonight? You bet. Good luck. Thanks. Well, the rear steer can certainly get you around that final turn a lot quicker, but it also takes a very tender hand. You can see the rear steering working here on the King Crunch as he comes to the line. Well, Dave said a lot of guys don't use it all the time. That's because in big arenas outdoors, most of the courses are pretty straight. They don't really need it. But uh, that's a sound thinking on his part. Always know where that lever is and exactly what it's going to do for you or again you. All right. In this matchup, you're going to see the King Crunch. You just saw a good close view of it. And in the near lane, I always love to see this machine, the Grave Digger. Even more than the machine, I love to see the way Dennis Anderson drives. It's almost like he's got his eyes closed sometimes. It's just in total abandon. Scott Stevens of King Crunch knows that. He'll be looking out to his peripheral vision to make sure Grave Digger doesn't sound in his lane. I mean, he really stays with the Grave Digger driver, Dennis Anderson. King Crunch, Texan Scott Steven at the wheel, gets a little better start. Here comes the Grave Digger, and the Grave Digger up out of his lane. That's a disqualification right there. That's too bad. What a pretty mistake. Boy, I hope I didn't jinx it. I hope I didn't mean for that to happen. Grave Digger is one incredible machine to watch. We'll miss seeing him in future competition, but I'll tell you what, that is a disqualification for sure. We don't even have to check with TNT on that. Now the red flags were flying, but nice of the Grave Digger. Gave it a little run anyway, something for the fans. Oh, absolutely. These guys are entertainers as well as competitors. And Paul, it's at times like this, the driver wishes he had some uh, flaps on the thing. He knows that he's filling off to the left-hand side if he could only ride it in air, but it's not to be. Body English doesn't do much in a monster truck. He tried to compensate immediately by turning right, but the truck has too much weight and too much momentum, and Grave Digger is out for the evening. Okay, Scott Stevens certainly isn't. Let's go to he and Pat. Well, Scott, that's what you wanted, a perfect move down at the bottom of the track, a good, smooth start, and you had Grave Digger covered all the way. Yeah, you know, we've, we've got a, a major problem with our steering. It's not working too good, and, you know, we just kind of babied it down that front straightaway, got through that curve, and, you know, we looked pretty sad coming back down that other straightaway. We got the win, and that's what we got. You know, Digger's in third place, and we're in second in the points, and, you know, that puts us two more points ahead of him. That's what we needed in Houston. I have, you're having yourself a spectacular night here in the Astrodome. Great run. Yeah, if we... If we don't put it on its top with the steering like it is, we may end up on our top. It's not working. Thank you. Well, he's happy about his victory in the King Crunch. And, of course, with the completion now of round number two, that will send King Crunch into the semifinal round. And there he will face Night Life 2. And in the other pairing of the semifinal, it will be the Carolina Crusher versus the Equalizer. The mini rods are coming up next over on the pulling track. We'll be back with more action from the Astrodome right after this.